Hello, this is Wes Fryer in Oklahoma City sharing some thoughts about sharing spaces, comparing Google Classroom and Seesaw, and hopefully helping you decide which of these tools, or whether both of these tools, are a good fit for your classroom and your students. You know, every classroom needs a sharing space. Sharing spaces provide places where students can turn and work, they can provide feedback, we can provide feedback, and students can share. And we have sharing spaces in the physical analog classroom, but today many pre-K through 12th grade classrooms are missing a digital sharing space. Just like we would share student work on the wall or up on a data projector, a television, or the hallways, we need places for students to be able to share their work. And these spaces, when they're digital, should not only support sharing inside the classroom, meaning that students and teachers can access them, and perhaps parents, but also outside the classroom, because parents are not in our classrooms really that much. And so hopefully this slideshow will help you understand the benefits as well as limitations of different sharing spaces, including Seesaw and Google Classroom. Seesaw is a digital learning journal which empowers students to create, share, and interact. And notice the focus there on learning journal. While Seesaw can be used as an assignment manager, its primary focus is not student assignments. And therefore, it doesn't just empower teachers in the way that some other platforms do. It also directly empowers students. And so it's an ideal place for a digital portfolio and what I would consider to be the file cabinet portion of a digital portfolio. You know, we need a place where we can put all of our work for a digital portfolio. And then the other part of it might be a showcase where we can take out certain examples and then use those to really show off what we have learned, what we know, what we can do. Seesaw can do both of these things, and it's important to recognize that it's primarily a learning journal. And it's also appropriate for all grade levels. It's not just something for elementary learners. We've got kids in pre-AP biology classes this year using this for um, their own um, science journal as they're reflecting, and it's something that we also have high school language teachers using because it facilitates the sharing of audio recordings as well as other things so easily. So Google Classroom is a digital assignment manager that empowers teachers to digitally facilitate classroom learning. As it has been discussed by Google representatives, it's not a full-blown learning management system, or LMS, like we think of Canvas or Haiku or Blackboard or something like that that you may have seen in higher education and possibly in high school. Um, but it is focused on managing assignments, and so teachers create assignments, those go out to students, and students can turn those in. And if you do not have something like this, especially if you are a secondary teacher teaching middle school or high school, this is really a huge time saver because it can be challenging to have students turn in digital work when we don't have a platform that records who has turned something in and who hasn't, and when they turned it in, and that we can use to distribute files and to share you know, resources with students. And so Google Classroom is free, and with some changes that have happened in the spring of 2017, it is now available not only to Google, what's called GAFE, um, Google Apps for Education, or now G Suite, but it's actually available to anyone using a uh, Google account. Um, you can open it up to anyone. I think actually you do have to be a GAFE school to create this, but you can invite others who are outside. So that's an important clarification. If your school's not using Google Apps for Education, or G Suite. I don't think you can create a Google Classroom, but someone else can create one for you and you can then, and it can be shared outside. Um, I think though to be the teacher you've got to be in that Google domain at this point um, that's using Google Apps. So this is a video I'm going to recommend that you watch and the web link that was on the first slide and I'll mention it again at the end has the direct hyperlinks to this or you can scan this QR code. And this is just a short video that the folks at Seesaw have created primarily for parents, but it gives a really good overview of the power of Seesaw and how it's so valuable to allow parents to get notifications via text message or email when things are added to their students' portfolio and how it promotes this idea of sharing work and sharing ideas both inside and outside the classroom.
This is a video shared with a link created on safeshare.tv, and that is a fantastic website that not only eliminates the advertisements and the, and the so-called related videos um, for a YouTube video and the comments that are at the bottom. It also allows you, if you would want, if you would like, to choose when to start and stop a video if you just want to share a portion of it. So it also works inside Seesaw. So SafeShare.tv doesn't require any login or account, um, and it's a great tool that works with just about any learning management uh, system or digital portfolio system, and just gives you a nice safe link. This is another short video that I recommend you use, and this is an official Google video about Google Classroom, and it just talks about some of the basics of how to invite students using what's called an invitation code that they can put in using their Google account. Of course, students have to have their own Google account in order to use Google Classroom, and that's another discriminator between Seesaw and Google Classroom, but they are going to be able to participate in discussions. They're, not, they're going to be able to um, access your documents. It, this is going to handle the sharing back and forth of the documents and the document turn in, uh, and they've you know continued to add some different features as as it has gone along. Google Classroom is not as fully featured, like I said, as a full-blown learning management system uh, like Canvas, but definitely has a lot of power and can really save you time as a teacher uh, when you're just going to be managing digital files and working in this blended environment with students. So both Seesaw and Google Classroom share some features that are important to recognize, and I've mentioned some of these already. They both facilitate the turn-in of digital work by students. They both record the date and time when student work is turned in. So there's no more, I, I turned that in, you know, the, the platform, the digital classroom um, extension, if you will, whether that's Seesaw or Google Classroom will record those things. And probably most importantly, I think, it can provide examples for parent conference time discussion. You know, when you have that opportunity to sit down with a parent, nothing is better than being able to show some examples of student work. And in the case of especially Seesaw, being able to hear students being, you know, talking about what they've learned, sharing their projects. Um, you can do that with Google Classroom as well if you have students, you know, turn in videos or other kinds of media where they've recorded their voice. Um, both of these also, importantly, support the sharing of a template and then let each student get their own copy. So this is huge, just like you would, you know, uh, create an assignment and, and, and copy it and distribute it to students, and everyone can then mark on their own copy. That's what they can do now with both Seesaw and Google Classroom. So in terms of trying to decide which one you should use, um, if you are a middle or high school teacher, you might... You might start more with Google Classroom, but perhaps not. Um, recognize that Seesaw is either student-initiated or teacher-initiated. That means with Google Classroom, generally everything starts with the teacher creating an assignment and setting a due date. But Seesaw allows students to initiate or teachers, and it really allows for the building of a digital portfolio. And if you choose to subscribe and pay for Seesaw, that portfolio can actually move with students um, as they progress in their school career at, at your school. Um, Seesaw has built-in creation tools for audio and for digital drawing, and the Plus account also supports the assessment of skills. So you can have a rubric of skills, and then you can tie different submitted items and students um, can as well as they choose different folders to put things into, but uh, the skill part is something that is just with the Plus account. Everybody has access to different folders. Google Classroom, um, as I mentioned, is pretty teacher uh, schooly focused, meaning it's assignment based. Uh, does show who has turned or not turned in an assignment, and that's something that, that Seesaw does not do. It supports quizzes, uh, it supports threaded discussions, and um, you know is has has a different feel. And they're both wonderful tools and platforms, but they've got different benefits as well as limitations. So I hope this information has been helpful to you. You can find a copy of this video and these slides, which I would invite you to utilize in your own workshops and training on uh, wfriar.me slash sharespace. And that's a shortened link that will take you to a page on the website designcreateshare.org. And this is a new collaboration that I am working on with my wife, Shelly. So good luck to you and enjoy using Seesaw and or Google Classroom with your students.